Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Shonen and Chill, hosted by Zenrado and Asaratha. Apologies for the late episode last time. Uh, unfortunately, Zenrado was getting hit by the Shueisha sick beam. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do every time uh, any content creator gets close to releasing content. They hit him with the um, uh, poor physical condition beam. I made sure to uh, pad Zen's window with aluminum foil, so we should be good for this week. <laughs> I've got the hat on and everything yeah. right now. We're probably fine. <laughs> um, yeah, I saw people were a little bit frustrated about that, but I mean, it happens. It's, it's yeah, okay. I don't know what to tell you, y'all. It is what it is. It's funny because like every time the episode like doesn't come out what people expect, they'll come into my stream and be like, "Hey, where's the S and C episode?" And I'm like, "I don't know, dude." Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I have a co-host so someone else can get harassed when I don't feel good. <laughs> She's like, "I don't know, that's man." That's the job. Just go ask him. That is the job. But, uh, I can't think of anything just, news-wise. I, yeah, I don't. I don't think anything happened. No, I, I don't think anything really did. Um, I think. I think most things will probably happen after Anime Japan in two days. Today yeah, is so maybe next episode we'll have Thursday, a bunch of stuff yeah. to talk about. Uh, oh, the Sukuna Maharaga fight on the Blu-ray got. I don't know if it got leaked or if it just got purchased. I don't really know what that what that was, but uh, it's pretty good. Looks pretty sick. Yeah, it seems that they really it. they really enjoy that fight. Something yeah. tells me, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, they kind of went hard on that. I remember when it came out uh, on the air, they were like, we're really disappointed in the final product. Uh, and oh, now yeah, I see why. Because <laughs> that popped off pretty hard. Yeah, I've seen some people go like, well, it's just kind of lame that, you know, it's just a fight for like six minutes. And I'm like, well, no, it's cool. So I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't really know what to tell you, man. What do you, what do you, <laughs> in Jujutsu Kaisen, that's what you're complaining about? <laughs> This shit isn't like green, green, greens, dog. Like, like, what do you want them to do? Doing? Let Sukuna be cool for like one of the last times, you know? Yeah, before he becomes like a really <laughs> annoying fucking curse technique merchant. <laughs> before he becomes, well, I don't want to go that far, but before he becomes like the the all for one, like, oh my god, who's gonna fight me this week? All right, kind take, of, it, take it easy. Uh, it's not yeah, that bad. revolving door. The revolving, <laughs> the revolving door. door yeah, you know I mean? you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not all for one bad, but yeah. Yeah, no, of course not. Before, <laughs> before, before one, people, uh, yeah, before people want to slaughter me over that, I, I do not <laughs> think Sukuna is nearly as bad as All for One. Okay, I promise. All for One is one of the worst characters ever. <laughs> All right, good. We've salvaged our reputation. What little of it I there guess. is. Once yeah, again, make sure you throw a make sure you throw a Sukuna thumbnail on this video now, otherwise we're gonna be in big trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, well then, I guess uh, with no news, the first thing we can talk about is all uh, My Hero Academia. Yeah, let me let me remember what happened real quick in this one. Uh, he, he punched all the fingers off, yeah. and that's where the entire uh, production for the whole chapter for the week went, was into <laughs> that one page of him punching those so... fingers off. I mean, the same as last time. I still am. I still think how we got here is very goofy. This idea that like we're now physically incorporated into Shigaraki's mind, and we could be physically affected by what happens in here is it's it's very silly. Yeah, um, a little bit. Yeah. Now, obviously, at some point, a contrivance isn't super important as long as what you get out of it is worth it. Um, Ocean Man made this argument particularly well in the past because technically the way this story started and the way a lot of stories start is by a contrivance, but we give that the benefit of the doubt because it led to cool shit, AKA the entire story. Right. Um, so there's an extent where like, I'm okay with this happening because I do think that this could be good. Yeah. Um, it's less that like it ruins the story or something, but if for me, it just almost feels like why even bring that up? What difference it, does it make? This mostly is only happening because Deku and Shigaraki don't have a relationship. And I think we talked about this last time too. That this this is the this is the band aid because they never interacted. They've interacted once in Act One. Oh yeah, um, at the mall, right? Yeah, and then they fought in PLW, and that was it. They have no relationship outside of that. Yeah, it it's it's just a little weird. I I liked the chapter itself, like the content of it. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You know, like the 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 stupidest discourse I've ever seen was about this week. Was oh, the, yeah, about how Was how Nana, Nana hugging him yeah. or not? Yeah, that was maybe the dumbest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. That was really um, bad. Yeah. Consider following low-tier God's advice if you care about that. <laughs> um, 
it, it was, it, it does not matter. She was hugging him and also stopping him. She's doing both at the same time. That's kind still of still her son. Thing. Still her son. Still her son. Yeah, not not that hard to understand. Um, That's what happens when you're 13 on Twitter. Unfortunately, is that you can't really. Yeah, you, you have no understand. idea how emotions work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I it, think I think the idea of this is still cool, despite my grievances with it. Yeah. Also, the page turn of uh, Shigaraki's dad knocking the shit out of him was was pretty. Yeah. I was like, oh god. <laughs> that was uh, that was pretty good. My only other kind of complaint is that I don't know. It feels a little silly how um, how explicit all of this is. I guess like how literal it all is. You know what I mean? Yeah, the fact but that, like I you don't have know to literally see his memories, especially with yeah, the people that you see talk about this on a regular <laughs> okay. basis. I I don't have an alternative idea, but like I don't know the the concept of. It's such a strange concept to me. Like, I don't mind it. I have weird hang-ups about it, but it's okay, I guess. So is is Deku quirkless now? Uh, From what I understand, he still has stockpile, so he still has the base strength. Fun but fact, how if way, Yoichi is gone? So Yoichi is the transfer. So that technically means that he transferred at Nana without having the transfer quirk, so Hori's going to have to fix that in the volume release, probably. Oh. <laughs> um... But the stockpile is so. Uh, if what I recall, my MHA memory is not. It's it's getting a little bit worse as the days go by, and I get more disconnected from the series. But uh, I believe stockpile and transfer fused in Yoichi, and it became one quirk. Uh, how this works, I couldn't tell you, and neither could Hori, because it only happened once ever in the history of MHA. But <laughs> okay, all right. So technically, he might still have stockpile. However, if he was quirkless, I could also believe that. Either or, I don't really care. If he's quirkless, I think it's really funny though. It's because just weird. Like, yeah, group. well, because you know they they paint the vestiges as like the representation of their quirks. Yeah. Um. So I don't know to see to see the original one gone and then he still has the original quirk. I feel like it would be weird. It, it probably would make sense. I'm sure someone in the comments would be like, actually, if you you know look at chapter four, page eight, when they talk about <laughs> quirk science or whatever, uh, it makes perfect sense. But just from the way it's presented to the audience, having him gone feels weird for the quirk to yeah. still be there because of how they've done it with everyone also, else. Also, you remember when somebody? You remember when I think it was Kudo was like, "Hey, Bonjo, you should stay with Deku because Black Whip is really good." He's yeah, gone. He, he didn't he, stay. <laughs> he needs that. Yeah, he did not stay. Um, yeah, which is weird. Uh, I imagine they'll maybe explain that because maybe they like it wasn't. By choice, I don't know. Yeah, because ultimately Nana didn't go when he tried to send her over. Uh, yeah, he got she got rejected, and ultimately, Yoichi being gone is like it's flat out wrong because he wouldn't be able to transfer if Yoichi was gone. But uh, that's that'll be a mistake that Hori has to deal with later. Yeah, either he'll rewrite it in the volume, or there'll be some reason as to why. Yeah, it works. somebody else also pointed out in my Discord that I, I didn't think about this until now when they were testing the the transferring quirks thing to damage shigaraki and you remember how they gave him gear shift first because apparently the backlash transfers which doesn't make any fucking sense but whatever yeah. so they, they brought up a good point if they wanted to test if transferring the quirk itself does damage why didn't they transfer the the all might vestige because it doesn't have a quirk oh yeah well he's gone too right yeah yeah he's gone now okay well i'm sure we'll figure out what all that shit means in the future <laughs> Because now we're hitting the point where he's gonna like watch the the freak out, yeah. right? Yeah. But for all for all my weird hangups about what's happening, I do think the idea of Deku seeing Shiggy kill his family could be very very good. I think that could be really interesting. Yes, I I do agree. It feels a little bit weird that he's literally just like in his memory. Like what mm -hmm. what are their actual bodies doing right now? Are they just standing there? They're just chilling. Looking at each other. Not <laughs> that them standing there looking at each other is that different from what they've been doing the entire arc up to this point. Can you imagine like the helicopters floating around. They're like, they're just, they're just standing there, but like different this time. <laughs> they're, they're, neither one can make a move. That's how expert the other ones is. <laughs> Maybe they're just moving so fast we can't see them. <laughs> All we can see is their bodies standing there. <laughs> this is a truly Death Note-esque mental struggle. 
Uh, but I thought the content was good. I really like the Nana stuff. Yes. Um, yeah, the Nana stuff was good. Nana has good. always been Nana has always been the best message, and it's not even close. Well, yeah, because she's the only one that feels like a yeah. character outside of just being a face yeah. on a quirk for all for uh, one and for all. If we go to chat, if we go to page six, by the way, I uh, I don't know if I've t complained about this on the show yet, but I absolutely fucking despise how every quirk vestige is called by their number. I think that's so annoying. Oh, instead of their name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, or, that's like also every weird time... because Deku uses her name later on. Every time Deku uses a quirk, he's like, "That's it. I'm gonna use the fifth black whip." Just like relax, dude. That's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut up. Just chill. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It, it is it, a little it, bit it, weird. It's it not like they need the code name, right? It like... doesn't. It, it doesn't help sell the idea that like Deku's identity shouldn't be intertwined with One for All so heavily, when he is also like conflating their existences with their just their numbers you know what i mean it feels like a little dehumanizing yeah i can see that or like when they call him the ninth i don't know it, it feels a little inconsistent for me yeah i can see that i honestly didn't even pick up on it because i don't read these chapters that hard <laughs> uh for my hero but uh that is a good point solid chapter though i didn't hate it despite what it sounds like <laughs> yeah yeah i mean it's easy to make fun of stuff in my hero but uh I thought the actual content was was good. The, the Nana stuff is really good. Uh, I like when there's actual emotional payoff in what's happening instead of just two characters yeah. who've never seen one another before beating each other up. Yeah, I, yeah. I do like on um, page fourteen how like they break the glass to actually get into the, the like the memory itself, and then the glass yes. shards are also spreading to the next page. That's cool. Yes. Um, all right. Well, I guess now we can jump to because I don't believe we talked about this chapter last week uh, to Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, which one was this again? Is this the uh, one where... Maki getting rocked? Oh yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Well, you he's know, really, he's really never going to beat the allegations, is he? No. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what the point of Jujutsu Kaisen is anymore. Like the, the revolving my, door, dude. I think my brain has dissolved into just mush. From <laughs> so, are are we going to say that this battle has technically started with Gojo? Is that what we're going to go with? Like it's been nothing but just. Throwing hands at Tsukuna since Gojo. Yeah, won. it's throwing one person at a time. Yeah. Uh, so Black flashing Maki is so funny, dude. Holy fuck. Yeah, black flashing Maki like off the side of a building <laughs> into the fucking abyss. Uh, okay. And now the the door has revolved once more, just like Maharaga's wheel, and now we have Kusakabe here. <laughs> and now yeah, Kusakabe is here. At least he knows himself that this is pointless. You know. He's like he's like man, come on. <laughs> yeah, like you fucking serious. <laughs> uh yeah so this battle against sukuna started in chapter 223 that was the chapter where gojo launched the 200 percent hollow purple uh that was in uh, on may 21st of 2023 oh my god that's really rough it's been almost a year straight of people fighting sukuna and then the narrator going, Sukuna's not even trying. And then Sukuna <laughs> kills that person. A year straight of that almost, dude. It's been, what, 10 months of that? I'm really... I, I miss Yuji. I want him to be the protagonist of the series again. I want them to do something other than just get thrown into the meat grinder. <laughs> like... <laughs> Because, you know, I think we talked about it last time, but there's that theory going around that they won't beat Tsukuna here, and he'll, like, go do whatever, and they'll have to, like, regroup and fight him sounds again. Like Cope, that One, that sounds like Cope. Two, after it taking this long, that sounds miserable. Could yeah, you imagine a year of fighting if, Sukuna. If, and yeah, and then they leave, and then they're like, all right, it's time for year two and of let's, fighting Sukuna. Let's be real. Let's be real. It would be a year of fighting Sukuna, and then we would time skip to them. Like, we would skip past all the preparations for the next fight, and then we would start fighting them again next chapter. Yeah, we'd get, like, one chapter of them in a room being, like, all right, each other on the back. this is the strat. And then, we'll, and then the next chapter, they'd be, like, at his fucking fortress or whatever. <laughs> um, man, I'm so over it. Individually, there's cool stuff that happens in it. The fight with Maki was cool to look at. Like yeah. when he when he grabs her by the face and she breaks the hold fast enough to only get the one slash on her face. Pretty cool. Um, but I'm just tired of it. Right? Like it's like having the same thing for dinner every day for a year. Like it could be your favorite <laughs> food and you still wouldn't want it anymore. What do you think is going to end first, JJK or MHA? Uh, MHA has got to be within within 20, I think, right? I think, I think MHA is done in like maybe two volumes. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't imagine it has more than 20 in the tank at this point. Yeah. Unless, for some reason, the stuff we're doing right now doesn't, like, so, fix anything, and they just have to go back to beating on each other. Let's think about MHA. So we still have to conclude Deku versus Shigaraki, which seems like we're getting there. Um, I, I, I we'll... imagine whatever the conclusion is, my thought process is that it will be within the the brainscape thing they're in right now. Yeah, how yeah. The fight ends. I, th I think I think the fight is done. Yeah, I I don't think we'll see any more punching across the landscape or whatever. Um, yeah, very lackluster fight, by the way. Yeah, well, I don't really think any <laughs> MHA fight is all that great, but um, so we have to do Deku versus Shigaraki, which I think that fight that I think that entire sequence is like coming to a close soon. Um, and then we have to do Aizawa and Kurogiri, who disappeared like 30 chapters ago. <laughs> uh, Hori said many eons ago that he wants to give Sero a big moment in the final the final arc. Yeah, which I feel like you've missed your chance, right? Like No, because he's going to tape up Shigaraki's dog back together after it gets decayed. <laughs> <laughs> and then for, for JJK, maybe it's just because I don't know JJK as well, but... I don't know how much longer we got in the tank for this either. I mean, we've been fighting Sukuna for a year straight. Well, the, the only thing shot. is that unless they end the series without the merger happening, which is possible, because it's Gege, so he might just be like, fuck it. <laughs> that thing I've been talking about, I ain't doing it. Um, but I, I assume that the series has to continue past just beating Sukuna, because yeah. one, I we do... gotta get Megami out of there, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh yeah, him. Yeah, yeah we got to get the fucking fraud out of there. <laughs> and then uh, I've seen some people think that they think Megami is going to do the merger because he's just given up on life. So he's like, fuck it, I'm going to kill everyone. Um, I've seen people say that when Sukuna's lame. about to die, he's going to do the merger. I don't know. But the fact that Kenjaku's whole evil plan <laughs> was transferred. Yeah, well, he got one shot and then he was like, my will will live on. And all he meant by that was that Sukuna can now do the thing. It, not like anything, there's no big plan, it's just Sukuna can do the merger now if he wants to. Uh, I imagine it has to happen before the series can end. I haven't deeped it extraordinarily, but the concept of Megumi initiating the merger because he wants to die is like so fucking lame to me. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't I don't feel like that feels like a very good narrative payoff, nor do I feel like Megumi being the final villain has much narrative, like... Yeah. That definitely would feel not not to be one of those famous people who's like the only other anime I've ever seen is Naruto, um, but that would really feel very like I need to have a Sasuke moment. So let's take this guy who's never done anything bad in his life other than be grumpy, and make him the final villain. Uh, I don't think it would work out. Um... Well, Megumi is really not interesting. To me. No, no, there's really nothing about him that's particularly appealing. Um, everything cool he could have done. Uh, Sukuna just did it instead in his body. <laughs> um, I can't believe how many times Megami lost. He's still losing mentally. Yeah, Megami just doesn't... His only wins have been against a nameless finger bear that was just like a guy. Just something. Uh, and the Reggie register. Star. Yeah, yeah, Captain Cash Register. Uh, which he barely won. Wow. That was a high diff victory. <laughs> All right, that dude yeah. was struggling. I wonder if I wonder if Gege really must have taken inspiration from Bakugo on how to write like <laughs> a secondary character like that because like they both they both don't do anything they both lose so like but they keep winning the popularity polls <laughs> yeah which I don't get either because Bakugo at least has like a personality yeah. um, Megami really does not have much of a personality to him right like Bakugo is at least kind of like larger than life in that he screams all the fucking time. So yeah. when you look at the screen, you're like, hey, he's doing stuff. Megami just kind of is, like, uh, grumpy and disheveled, and that's, like, his whole thing. Yeah. I mean, I've never personally been a huge fan of much of the JJK cast, especially since it's impossible to get attached to anybody because they get turned to mincemeat. Yeah, they get killed, but like, unceremoniously yeah. almost immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had a feeling that wasn't going to happen to Megami because he's not a woman, but I still just couldn't really get attached to him, so... He's just not really a character. Like, the only character I like right now, I like Yuta and I like Yuji. So, Sukuna is okay, I guess. Yeah, well, I liked Sukuna before. Now, yeah. now I'm like, damn, <laughs> can we kill this guy already? Or what? Like, what's what's the holdup here? Um, Yeah, it's fine. Jujutsu Kaisen Weekly nowadays is just falling into this rut for me of, like, that was objectively cool to look at, but I can't care at all about it. 
Like, yeah, that's... and I want to stress that like this is nowhere near MHA bad to me. Like I, no, I don't like it's a lot of the stuff boring. that JJK. Yeah, I don't like the stuff that JJK is doing, but like it's not like pissing me off. I'm just, it's not getting me all worked up and mad or anything. But like, yeah, it's just like I'm just like, fine. Eh, okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm just ready to be done and move on to something else. You know what I mean? Like I, I would yeah. like to see some content that isn't. And the worst part is, I think, is, is how repetitive that it is. Not just because it's another person coming in, but it's always mm -hmm. the same exact formula of, like, person's here. This is the yeah. best guy since Look. Gojo. The coolest guy ever. Hits Sukuna, like, twice, and then it's it's a wrap. He wasn't even trying. He didn't even really care. <laughs> GG's. I know, I know there are leaks out. I have not looked at the leaks, by the way. I know they're out, and I know for a fact this is going to happen again. I know for a fact that Kusakabe is going to fight Sukuna, and then at the end of the chapter, somebody needs to jump in. It's just, it's just going to happen. And like that, it's so easy to predict because that's what's happened happening for a year. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, literally every single, like, it was cool when it happened after Kashima went down. Because then it was yeah. like, oh, it's Yuji and, and, and Higuruma and, you know, Hikari mm -hmm. all at the same time. And I thought yeah. something cool was going to come out of that. Um, it didn't. Nothing, nothing cool came out of that at all. Yeah. I really, so I still think it's I mean, funny. This has nothing to do with any of the current chapters anymore. It's just me making fun of it a little bit. Um, but I still think it's really funny that they had that whole arc where Megumi, you know, kills his sister in in Sukuna's body, uh, or Sukuna <laughs> kills his sister in Megumi's body, and yeah. um, Yurozu's like, "This is a symbol of my love. Take it and go." And it's just that fucking lightning rattle that only exists it's for two pages, yeah. so that he doesn't get sniped by Higurumas of the domain. That's the only so, reason that thing existed. So actually really dumb like actually really fucking dumb it's it's jjk has a lot of like contrivances to it but that i mostly can hand wave because it's like whatever like uh even in the very beginning when they're like wow yuji ate sukuna's finger and didn't die and that's a one in a and like oh kenjaku specifically bred yuji to be a sukuna vessel but also yeah. he just sort of found it like in a birdhouse like <laughs> you know um it's just, uh, there's a lot of contrivances to it, but that one feels the most egregious. That they're like, so here's this special thing for you. Everything in a story is a plot device, of course. So that's not news. The uh, The rattle that Sukuna got from Yorozu is so plainly a plot device. Because when you make a plot device, you want to have enough set dressing to where people don't look at that and go, oh, that's obviously a plot device. So like, Hawks is a good example from MHA because Hawks was a character that didn't really exist. And then Hori was like, well, fuck, I need a way to progress the story, so I'm going to make Hawks. But obviously, he has a character. He has his own goals and objectives, and he has, like, you know, his own flaws and everything. So you don't think of him as a plot device. The issue with the rattle is that everybody on Earth is going to look at the rattle and be like, that existed so that he didn't get one shot by Higurama's domain. And no, no other reason. Yeah, that, that's literally the only reason. It, he didn't even do anything with it. He, like, hit Kashima with it one time. And then it was like, oh, it didn't work because Kashimo is the lightning man or whatever. <laughs> um, and then it got sniped by Hiruma. <laughs> like, that was all it did. I don't know, yeah, man. It's, 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 just it's really dumb. Yeah, you remember when he when Hiruma also got one shot? That was fun. Remember when they were like, wow, he's such a crazy genius sorcerer that he learned reverse <laughs> curse technique on the spot, and then he got killed by the very next attack that hit him after that? <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Like, I really I really just cannot enjoy this probable final arc. I, I cannot. Yeah, it's just like, it's okay as mindless fun. Maybe, I, I've heard people say it would be better if you were binging. I don't know if that's true, because it's like 85 chapters straight of this. Um, but obviously, we're not binging it. We're reading it on weekly release. So it is a different vibe. Um, but I don't know. It's tough to, to care, I guess. There is a common thought that, like, you you have definitely heard of this. People are like, oh, you're just not built for weekly reading, bro, you know? Yeah, I've I've heard people say and that. To some extent, it's fair to not like weekly reading. I think that's okay. But, and I'm not saying the people that are saying that it's better on a binge are saying this, but to the people that are like, um, just like, you should just let it stack then because, you know, you're not built for this. This is an intended way of experiencing the story. Like, people in Japan are buying these magazines and reading them every week. Yeah, like, Volume release is fine. 
Yeah. But um, I, I, it is definitely how the content is presented to the public, right? Like, it's sort yeah. of like a TV show. Like, you don't tell people who are watching the live releases every week that, like, oh, you should just let the season finish because it's not the way they no. choose to release it to the audience isn't how you're and meant to consume it. it. It's, it's weird. Yeah, and it's funny because it never applies the other way around. Like, you can't, you can still praise even though it's weekly. You just can't criticize. Because what if Yeah, praised... yeah, that's true. Well, I feel like that's true for anything, too. Not even just, like, yeah. a weekly thing. yeah. Like, it feels like people are, like, uh, you know how people will say stuff like, oh, you know, give him time. Like, you can't say this chapter's yeah. bad until you see the ones in the future. But you you can say it's good without seeing ones in the future, in right? Fact, like, yeah. you have to wait for the payoff I, to see if it's good. I can name a stronger example of me praising something when I shouldn't have that bit me in the ass, a.k.a. Bakugo. <laughs> Turns out I should have waited, but, you know, I was praising him so nobody cared. Yeah, it is, it, and I understand to an extent the, like, positivity is more fun than negativity. Mm-hmm. And I do think that people who, like, go into other people's posts to be like, actually, this sucks, Absolutely. are, like, yeah, lame. Yeah, yeah. But there's such a huge reaction to literally, like, anyone saying anything is bad anywhere on the internet. And I just mm-hmm. don't, I don't really understand why. Like, if you don't like seeing that person's view on, you know, it happens with JJK, too, especially now. That people are being more vocal about not liking these recent chapters. Um, if you don't like people's view on it, like just don't engage with them. Like, why are you engaging yep. with them just to make yourself matter? Like, is that how the internet functions now? Like, we just when I uh, when I see somebody like on somebody on Twitter posted their I just cut off a free run. I rated a five point five out of ten. You know what I did after that? I kept scrolling. In fact, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't even know their name. I don't know who it was. <laughs> It did not impact my life whatsoever, and the only reason why I'm remembering it now is because I just saw it on my timeline just now, after I just opened up Twitter. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, I feel like you can't base so much of your personality around defending a series on the internet, man. Is it really worth yeah. it? Yeah, like... it'd be crazy if somebody made a video about that. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be crazy yeah, if my... somebody's Kagurabachi video was back up on the channel. I got my ass beat, bro, for that Talon vs. Hardwick video. Uh, that shit was so funny, man. I don't know what to tell you. That shit was fucking hilarious. The number <laughs> of people being like, we are not calling Deku talent. And I was like, you're right. And I'm like, <laughs> you're correct. You, I'm you're like, right. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe if you watched 30 seconds of that fucking thing. That's, that, that was the funniest part about it is that if you watch literally just 30 seconds and like, it's not like I posted a fucking four hour long leftist video essay. It's 10 minutes and 13 seconds, bro. Yeah. It's really, it's not that long one. And it's also a good video. And, like, it's just funny to see people go out of their way to, like, try to start shit about it and then have people go, actually, you're completely wrong. And if you watch even, like, a <laughs> few seconds of this, then you'd understand that that's, like, stupid. I mean, the title and, then, and the but, thumbnail. But, like, after you do that, then you have other people being like, oh, so you're a clickbaiter. And it's like, shut the fuck up. You're and just mad like, that yeah. you got blown up. Like, that's it. That's the only thing. The talent, or not the talent, the title in the thumbnail did a very good job proving the exact point of the video, I think. I think it did a very good job. I, I no, think it's no, a fantastic video. No uh, critical engagement, no no charitability, nothing. Just defend what you like. At, yep. At any blind, cost the, blind defend, no yeah. matter what. Uh, and then, like, when you get embarrassed for blind defending, no matter what, and people are like, that's a very stupid thing that you just did, just find <laughs> something else to, to, to bitch about, right? Like, don't... Yeah. Don't acknowledge that you were wrong or be like, oh, okay, never mind. Just find something like, else to bitch about so that you don't look like you were wrong. It's funny because there were comments that were like, well, why don't you put a question mark next to talent and hard work in the thumbnail? Like, well, that's a significantly worse thumbnail then. Like, I'm trying that's to, a I'm trying to get, thumbnail. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get people to click on it. I'm not trying to get people to not click on it, buddy. That's what this is. This is making me money right now. I'm trying to make a fucking living, buddy. That's weird too. Like, you don't, have you ever picked up a newspaper? And then the headline is literally just, like, exactly what's in the article. There's no, like, <laughs> any sort of sensationalism in it at all. Like, did you guys watch the news? As as I've been a content creator for a little bit, I've learned that there's two categories now. There's clickbait, and then there's legit bait. I think legit bait is what, like, most people do. I do think there is, like, an actual criticism to be made of clickbait that's, like, genuinely just not what the video is about it's not in the video at all yeah well because yeah. that's what clickbait used to actually yeah that's mean. what it used to mean yeah it used to mean when like you would put a, a fucking thumbnail on your video that was like twenty five thousand dollars for you and then you watch the video and it's like not that <laughs> right it's like, yeah. 
That's what clickbait used to be. Now clickbait is like your thumbnail needs to be absolutely nothing but six words that describe that fully summarize the content of the video that yeah. is in, or else it's clickbait, which is not what clickbait is. <laughs> I like I don't know. People people have an irrational hatred, I think, towards content creators. Some of it is deserved, but some of it's some of it's not. Well, there's always that like I don't want to say that it's jealousy because that feels very like short sighted because it's not like anyone who's a content creator barring like the biggest ones are making shit zillion dollars or something. But um, I think people want to be in a position where they're just like making shit that they crap on the Internet for other people to enjoy and they're not. And instead, they're going yeah. and like working at a cash register or whatever. Um, and that that kind of pisses them off because you get a lot of like the why don't you get a real job sort of thing, like as if this isn't work, you know, like you don't have to. Yeah, it's like into the, the thing that you're making. There is like the one side of like, oh, this is no work whatsoever, and it's it's just like the easiest job on the earth. And then there's the opposite side where you have like, who is? Oh yeah, where you have like streamers going like, this is so hard. My life. Oh, is don't so get me hard. started on that shit. Well, who was that? It was like Leffen or something, and he was like, I don't know. Um, I I think that was who it was. I don't remember. Um, I'm sure someone in the comments knows who we're talking about because that was a whole discourse on Twitter for like a week. But that that's the <laughs> dumbest shit ever. Like, if you're a content creator and you get up in the morning and you're like, God damn it. I have all day to eat food and play video games on a camera. <laughs> My life is so hard. Like, shut up, you idiot. But at the like, same there, time, there, for people to say, like, levels. there's no work that goes... See, I don't think... I'm about to out myself as, like, a big-time communist right here. But uh, I, I don't think <laughs> there's any real value in, like, measuring how hard poor people have it compared to other poor people because it sucks for everybody, Yeah. you know? So, like, if you're not Elon Musk who does jack fuck nothing all day and just gets rich off the work of everybody else that he's ever met in his whole life. Um, then trying to like argue who has it worse between the Walmart cashier and the target cashier is like irrelevant, right? Yeah, it is. That That's nothing. That's, that's a nothing argument created by people who have all the money so that you won't bitch at them instead. Right. So it's to, to be like, what's harder working in a McDonald's or making content is like the McDonald's probably, but is that yeah. a productive line of conversation? Not really. Uh, so that that alone feels it's, weird for people to focus on. It, it is purely handcrafted class antagonism. And it, it's they they they've, they've done a very good job at turning people in the same class to get like against each other over like the most minute shit. Well, yeah. I mean, it's the same reason that you'll see a senator be like, "Hey, anyone think it's weird that billionaires pay the same tax as somebody who makes like four hundred thousand dollars?" And then the people who make like twenty thousand dollars and can yeah. barely afford to live <laughs> with four roommates are like, "Um, no." They earn that money, and it's like, what's wrong with you? It's fucking, what's it's matter like, with you? And even, there, there's even just, like, a scale to being a content creator, too. Like, if you're someone like XQC, you're not doing shit, buddy. Like, you're just, like, sitting in your chair, like, speaking incoherently into the microphone, playing a game, and also stealing people's content by reacting to it. Yeah, I, I reaction content, I think, is almost exclusively bad. Um, I can see an argument for it with, like, video game stuff like uh stuff like that like, like etika used to do there's, um is yeah. stuff that i think is fine like you're watching trailers getting excited that's fine there's but i'm talking about like reactions to made content that other content creators do so you're just there's re-uploading guy... their video with your face on it yeah there's one guy his name is uh wait let me make sure i have his name right he reacts to my video sometimes his name is um that guy with a pencil and i don't mind when he reacts to my stuff because my talent for his hard work video is 10 minutes. He turned his reaction into, I think, like an hour-long video of him, like, yapping. I think that's fine. Yeah, well, because that that can become transformative after a yeah. while. It stops being a reaction when you're adding your own content into it, right? And no, yeah. screaming is not the content. <laughs> like, uh, remember that one? I think the best example is that one that I think it was XQC the one that, that you mentioned. where the JFK um, video? The one where he's watching someone's video and he just leaves. And it's just his <laughs> empty fucking chair in the, the frame while the other guy's video is playing the whole time. Like that's yeah. just, that's the content creator level where I'm like, you don't do fucking anything. Like you, that's like yeah, you that's are a blight on up. society. <laughs> like you and are. There, I've seen I've seen a lot of other creators talk about how they've had big creators react to their content, and then they post the view chart, and there's no noticeable change really. It doesn't well, yeah, because there. you don't have to go watch the video because you just watched it on this other person's channel. Yeah. But with them going, oh, my God, whoa, like afterward, you know, like, it, yeah, it's not. I think if, if you were to make reaction content like that, where you weren't allowed to actually show the video, 
and you were just kind of like talking about it, that would drive engagement because people need context. They'd be like, okay, well, what are you, what are you fucking responses. yapping about? Let me go look at, yeah, this is a response video. That's one thing. But when you're literally just playing the exact video, but with your webcam in the corner, like that, that that's nothing. That's not going to help anybody in yeah. any way. That doesn't drive anything to anybody. I, I have like, I've watched a couple of MHA videos on stream. And usually when I do that, if the video plays for like more than five seconds, I pause it. And like, I start talking about something like that. It's always funny because I've seen a couple of react videos where people in like the, the comments are like, why do you talk so much? It's like, dude, wa go watch the fucking video. Then, yeah, why, if if that's you the... want to see the other person's content, go watch <laughs> go that watch person's content. Video. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. I, I think I think particularly like making reaction content, particularly about like discourse related topics is basically just a furthering of the discourse. So as long as you're adding your own transformative spin to it, it's fine. But if you're like, it, it basically like if the video you're reacting to is ten minutes and your in reaction is like twelve minutes, delete it because that's fucking terrible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you need to, you need to add something. So like it, it, I really don't care if people react to my videos as long as it's a reaction. Like as long as there is a conversation to be had. And that's what that guy I mentioned does. Every every time he reacts to my shit, he adds like fifty minutes on top of it because he he has the the, the yap expansion. Yeah, which is, yeah, that's fine. If, if the dude's making an hour-long video out of yeah. 10 minutes of content, more power to him. If you're yeah. making a 10-minute video out of 10 minutes of content, because all it is <laughs> is the content, except you saying, oh my god, whoa, whoa, I don't know about that, that's crazy, <laughs> over the shit that's happening, is like, you're a piece of shit. Like, that's all I gotta say about it. Yeah. Like, uh, fucking everybody's favorite, the, the WoW guy who sleeps with dead rats, as we go, uh, yeah. That's the one, yeah. He uh, came up in my feed the other day because I was watching a Final oh, Fantasy fourteen content creator. Not not that one. That was a different one. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, on YouTube. On YouTube, I mean. Because um, I was watching some Final Fantasy fourteen content, and he got recommended for it. And I was like, all right, sure. And it was, a, it was a he reacts to this person video. And the whole video was him just going like, what the fuck? What the fuck? That's crazy, man. What the fuck? <laughs> and I was like, you probably made a shit zillion more dollars off of this than the person who actually made that yeah. original video did. Yeah, I, I don't know. That, that yeah, is yeah. so off topic from where JJ, we started. JJK, JJK is whatever, <laughs> I guess. It's, it's mid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, they're going to be like, wow, they really talked about JJK this week. I wonder what they... <laughs> uh, that's a lie. They're going to know. They're they know. See yeah, they know. This long Remember the one time like... we did this with Sakamoto and the first comment was, whoa, that Sakamoto <laughs> segment is 40 minutes long. I wonder what they actually talk about. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to look at this and be like, oh, Jesus. Nobody falls for it anymore, man. They all know. <laughs> My fault. This is the Yap cast. <laughs> it really is. Uh, okay, so we actually went out of order. We forgot to actually pick a top three, so we can go ahead and do that now. Oh yeah, my number three is Undead Unluck. Number two is Ruby Dragon. Number one's Kagurabashi. Oh, okay, my uh, my number three is Undead Unluck. My number two is Blue Box, and my number one is Kagurabashi. So that's pretty close. Pretty close. Zenrado always making sure he doesn't fit in. I gotta be different, man. I gotta be different. <laughs> I gotta be the only person that likes sports manga on the whole fucking internet anymore. It seems like. Um, I mean, I like I like blue boxes. Just I like the other three a little bit more. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, we'll start with uh, Ruri Dragon then. Um, I have always enjoyed. It's it's still going strong with the theme of you know, no one cares. Everything's normal. Um, they're just going out and doing mother daughter shit. I think that's cool. Also, like at the end of I think the most recent chapter where I they don't even notice that she has horns at first. I think while like they're commenting on the game that they're playing. I think that's fun. Um. I, I like I always I always like how Ruby Dragon just doesn't really call very much attention to the absurdity of its premise. Um, yeah, which I think is probably the strongest thing about Ruby Dragon is how they yeah. play it straight and it works. Yeah, um, I think that these couple of chapters introduce some possible angles. Uh, it's possible that Ruby Dragon permanently stays in the uh, slice of life category, but. I do think that it could possibly explore some inferiority towards Ruri's mom, because she is good at literally everything, and that's also another angle I think it introduces, the fact, why is she good at everything? That's kind of weird. And also, why does she fuck a dragon? <laughs> yeah, I still want to know how that she randomly birthed a dragon yeah. baby. That's a little so, strange. I think there's a little more to Ruri's mom that, is, that we're led to believe. Um, 
I do like Ruri's reaction to the prospect of like seeing her dad or like living with her dad. She's like, "Fuck that! I don't know that dude." So that could be interesting. They could have an interesting relationship going forward. Um, and there was a little bit of agitation from Ruri about how she always finds out about these things way too late, and like how she feels that they're being kept from her. And then finally, her mom mentioned wanting Ruri to find, you know, or wasn't Ruri that mentioned? I don't remember anymore. Something about living a human life. Um, mm -hmm. and that could be an interesting thing to try and dive into and define what is the difference between a human life and a dragon life that's cool though um, but yeah I think there's a lot of intrigue in the past couple of chapters that could be extrapolated on or it'll never be that deep and we'll find out soon yeah I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna miss it when it goes to the slower schedule it's better for the author's health I'm not saying that I yeah. value seeing you? it How over the author's how dare you I'm, I know, I know, I'm going to get that one commenter that's like, wow, after the Berserk guy died, we're still doing this? Kill um, him with hammers. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not saying that I wish it was content being made instead of this guy's health. I'm saying that in a perfect world where his health was not a concern, uh, I would like the content. But I'm, I'm more than happy to wait for it when, when they're up to making it. <laughs> Before they lose their shit on me. Uh, Alright, the next in line, we got Undead Unluck. I like the concept uh, of a luck versus unluck match. I think that's a cool yeah. idea. Yeah, it is. This fight against Beast, to me, it felt like good old-fashioned Undead Unluck. I don't know about you. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I still really miss Andy now. Like I'm, yeah. I'm at the point where I'm like, I would like him back. Um, but I, I think that Beast was the first fight in a while that has felt actually entertaining and mm -hmm. wasn't just some random shit they threw at the end to justify getting a new person, even though it kind of was uh, because it was them getting top. It, it still feels more like... I feel like characters doing things. Yeah, characters engaging other than just... and, and like In a way, other than them just being like, ah, yeah. I've conquered Where's... all of my problems. <laughs> Time <laughs> to be recruited cool. and do nothing. We had all this cool soul manipulation shit. We had Luna watching from the moon. We had the the age old undead unluck idea of the power of humanity overtaking predestined fate. I think it was cool. Um, I I really liked the the enemy team's goal being like, we can't let them get a shonen power up. We can't we can't let them. Yeah, do <laughs> we can't let them. We can't let the tropes happen or we're, <laughs> we're fucking bone. Uh, so the language. Uh, the the language or boom or whatever the fuck they're called. Uh, what's the name for it? The master rule has multiple phases. I'm wondering if that can go down to base concepts of communication because they were they were able to take away speech. Um, you can still communicate without speech. So many people are saying this. So they might. Yeah, you can. I imagine if anybody, Fuko is immediately going to find out and find a way around that. So language might have to go further down to try and remove even more layers of communication. But Fuko, who has been alive for a very long time, probably knows so many ways to communicate. And at the end of the day, humans will do it regardless. Yeah, well, is, it's, is it speech or is it language? Because language would also imply they can't write letters either. I would have to look again. Hang on. In the chapter, I believe it says language. Yeah, they won't be able to use language during that period. Which yeah. should mean that they not only can they not speak but they couldn't write anything either so they have to like yeah body language is, is that a language like yeah how is it going to define language yeah i guess which is I kind guess of it's... something that i like about undead unlock is that it's all about yeah. how you interpret what counts yeah what I, I was gonna say that's that's pretty in line with undead unlock because maybe it depends on how the the master rule here defines language but it's cool i liked it yeah it, it, it's getting into the stuff about undead unlock that i like which is like mm -hmm all the crazy rules and how they interact and what they do versus like i have to stop their tragedy or whatever like it was cute for a while i got kind of tired of it yeah. but this is what i really like about undead unluck it's just yeah. like the meat of the power system being smashed into the wall and seeing what fixes out of the fucking shattered remnants of all the bullshit old rules <laughs> all right so the next would be uh blue box i really like sports stuff i'm very uh, hype about this um it's just badminton too which is like the wackest sport of all time um i really liked the bit where they kind of have the little chat um 
about one like with one another where they're like oh only one of them is gonna go and this is his last year and all this kind of stuff and um <laughs> how taiki is not going to use like a rest game like he's not gonna throw the game and just loot like use it as time to recover for the last game because yeah. it's not like that. Um, and I like Chinatsu talking about how the, the perspective, even within their sport, is different between the two mm -hmm. of them, right? Where she can't imagine being the only one on a on a like court like that, where everything, mm -hmm. even though she kind of did <laughs> earlier, uh, where she was like, I, we lost because of me, um, where she's talking about how she can't imagine being in a position where there's nobody there helping her and it's just yeah. her down there. Uh, I thought it was cool. Cause it's like, it's kind of been built up through now up to um, like how similar they are because they have these similar hobbies and everything. And it's cool for them to point mm -hmm. out that like in reality, there's still a lot different in what they do. Yeah. I think I mentioned last episode that blue box is doing usually pretty well when it can mix both of its sports and its romance side of the manga at once. And I mean, that's exactly what this is. The way it's using the sports section to explore those characters to influence the romance section, I think that's a very big blue box W. It sounds kind of obvious given what it is, but I feel like there are, are times where we've kind of missed that from blue box. I, I feel like it hasn't gone super hard in the sports for a little bit until now, which is nice. Yeah, um, yeah, they definitely I do, th have I, I do think we're at the point where I don't know if they're going to be able to hide their relationship anymore, though, that's for sure, after what she screamed out. Yeah, uh, I don't think so. Because, yeah, and she yelled out his name. Which could be hype, though. I think I like that. I, I like that. The, uh, the only thing is um, it's obviously going to bring some drama at home, probably, which I'm interested in seeing what happens. But Very interested. Yeah. Um, they also show the, the girl who has a crush on him noticing as well. Yeah. Uh, so there's definitely going to be some stuff going on there. And I like that he's wearing the um, the ankle bracelet promise charm thing that they have. I thought that Yeah, was that was cute. cute. Yeah, I like that. It's Blue just box. cute. It's good, it's man. Cool. It, it's rad. Yeah, I really like it. It's very, Blue box. it's very wholesome. It's very exciting. It's one of my favorites every week. It's so good. It's been on a really good streak since the confession. Yes, I agree. It's been, it's been firing hard. All right, now that all the crap is out of the way, I'm talking about Thank the God. goat. Yeah, talking about the only much. the only real content uh kagurabachi dude shiba teleportation is so fucking <laughs> it's raw, so bro. sick it, when he grabs the dude by the face and then all of a sudden yeah. they're up above like a city holy fuck man it's so cool and then when he when he pops back up like as they're about to hit chihiro and he grabs the other guy and teleports them yeah. in the middle so they hit each other it's, he's so cool. I love this. It just dude. reminds me. It just reminds me of like enjoying Toto at his cool, like his best. Yeah, moments, at know? his like. It reminds me of um, in Mob Psycho 100, the guy that like oh, yeah, would yeah, teleport yeah, by yes. that dude. Was so sick, and it definitely I remember gives exactly similar the scene you're thinking about, dude. Holy shit! Yeah, where he like smashes the guy's face through. Yeah, the and, arm, he and then he teleports him up in the air. Again. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, so sick. Cool. Um, so the Shinuichi. Well, it's such a vile fucking weapon that even Chihiro's father want, like didn't want to let it loose, which is super interesting. Um, which kind of leaves me wondering what the end goal of this plotline is going to be, because uh, we discussed, I think, last episode about how you could probably find some gun control analogy with the swords only being wielded by the state and stuff like that. Uh, but I wonder if the ultimate conclusion is going to be to destroy all the swords, which seems kind of naive, just like guns, right? That's kind of a that's a, that's a cat that can't be put back in the bag, you know what I mean? Right. Um, that should happen. There's really nothing you can do about that. Uh, I wonder. I also do wonder if it'll come down to Chihiro reforging blades, like maybe Cloud Gouger will be reforged. That would because I mean he is the only one that supposedly knows anything about yeah. how to do it, right? Which would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I also and, really want to see what the plan is with giving them N10. Yeah. Dude, when I hit that page turn, my fucking jaw I actually dropped IRL. I was like, no fucking way. Uh, really good litmus test for, for Chihiro's current character, though. The fact that the same dude who in Chapter 1 would, like, he would never have conceived of that. But now he's like, well, Hakuri saved me. And obviously I have a plan, but I am willing to give up my sword. And it's, um, it's interesting, too, because I've seen some people talking about it. And I, I think the, the point here is that technically... 
that was like an exchange, right? That was like a transaction. So yes, Hakuri I, would no longer be considered part of that, the thing. I have this in my notes as well. I was wondering the same thing. I was wondering if technically he would be taken off of the list. Right, because he was traded like it was a... Because the same thing is like at the auction, right? Like if you buy the thing, yeah. could he just take it back from you and everyone? Yeah, no, I, I was right? gonna, I was gonna say that'd be kind of silly, right? If he could just, oh well, I'm gonna teleport it back. So fuck you. Thanks for answering. Right. Though. <laughs> so yeah, I think the, I think, I think the logic is sound that because that was a transaction, mm -hmm. now Hakuri is not part of the actual, like the room yeah. anymore. So they don't have to worry about that happening. And then whatever's going on with the little bit of water coming out of it. So there, there's really some hard, sort of dude. plan with him doing something with it in there. He has uh, some in into the domain expansion now. It's for like in some way. Yeah, there there must be some like either he's got a way into it, or there's something about the specifics yeah. of N10 that will allow it to like not be read. I don't know, but I really want to see what's happening with that little I'm bit of water excited. coming out of the. What a cliffhanger, by the way. Oh, dude. Oh my god, the page turn with him uh, giving up N10, that hit so hard, bro. Because oh, like, like, I, like I said, man, Chapter 1 Chihiro would have never. No, not a chance. That's, that, that's a big fucking move from him. And then like the, just the final page of the drip of water coming out of the scabbard, where he just says nothing's gone wrong. I was like, oh my god, <laughs> so sick. I'm really excited, man. Kagurabachi's so good. It's so good. Uh, was it Horikoshi that said it's very movie like? Yes. And it, I, that is such a good like summary of what I think about it is the Rare way Horikoshi it's presented. W. Yeah, yeah. The way it's presented is just like it's very cinematic. It's very like like you're watching an episode of a TV show, and you get hit with that cliffhanger right before it ends. You know, ah, it, it, oh, it's so mm -hmm. good. And I love the note of like your fucking hand is like the guy's hand is shaking. Mm -hmm. And it, because like it's got to be because he's nervous and he's like no I'm just pissed off like it's so good. <laughs> Shiba is so fucking cool, man. I he is quickly ascending to maybe my second favorite character. He's so sick. That shit was so raw. This series is so raw, but also so substantive at the same time. I love it. I do, do, yeah, it it's funny because you know we talk about Sakamoto Days all the time as being like the rawness incarnate series, but we never have anything to talk about. Um, it's crazy how Kagurabachi is not that. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Like, there's so much going on, and I'm here for all of it. Like, I love the fact, like, the little subtle note of, like, actually, they technically made a business deal. The ergo, like, the thing is yeah. gone out of his fucking powers. I, mean, and... I, I think for, like, the past 10, maybe 15 chapters, I don't remember, Kagurabachi has been, like, one of my favorites in the magazine. And now it is, it is absolutely my favorite thing running in the oh, magazine. Oh, it's currently. 100% my favorite. It, it's the only thing that I read first thing in the morning. I read the rest throughout the week. I, dude, I get so excited. when I, 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 I think I read five on Sunday, five on Monday, and then the rest on Tuesday. The Kagurabachi is always in the first batch. I'm not missing out on Kagurabachi. Yeah, I, I wake up Sunday morning, and I grab my phone, and I'm like, all right, let's check what happened in Kagurabachi. <laughs> like, that, that is my, before I eat, before I do anything, I see what happened in Kagurabachi. We will be purchasing Volume 1 in America. Oh, easily. I have not collected manga in a lot. I used to collect a lot. Like Same, dude. Um, I don't anymore except for the um, the Jojoniums, like the hardcover Jojo volumes. Mm -hmm. um, I do get those, but I, I think I might be getting Kagurabachi volumes. Yeah, I, th I have 16 volumes of MHA, and I think I have like 3 of ReZero. But I will be getting any Kagurabachi volume that spawns. Yep. Which is soon, right? Like, didn't they end up? Was like, it April or May? I forget. I, I want to say April, but I might just be overhyping it like early because I'm excited. Um, yeah. But I think April sounds right. Or no, it's like May second. Um, it's something super early in one of the months. I I felt like. Yeah, let me Google. Let's see. Fall. Oh my god. Damn. We were way off. We were way off. We were super <laughs> off. It's just the raw uh, hype <laughs> carried it too far. Um, but yeah, Kagurabachi, it bangs. Uh, people who don't like it by now, I've noticed that the meme comments have completely like subsided. People have just given up <laughs> trying to like shit on it. Um, man, I'm so ready for more Kagurabachi content. I know. Need. need. So... 
I saw somebody comment that they appreciated us even just quickly going through our thoughts on the rest of the series. Do you want to just like speed round this at the end of every episode and the rest of our thoughts and everything else? Yeah, we could do that. Um, All right. I guess we got to I mean, define I... what everything else will be. I have a list right here of everything that I have notes okay, on. Okay, so well then you just, like, you I go just... ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in the timestamps right. as uh, the everything else the, the lightning bonus round. Um, everything that's not Kagurabashi. And everything that you name, I will give a sentence of okay. thought on. Okay. Uh, Sakamoto days. Um, always raw as I, fuck. The... Always raw as fucked. Yeah. Inumaki is out of a job once more in another series. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the uh, like magnet woman is so yeah. sick. <laughs> She's yeah. so cool. Uh, Yozakura family. It's weird. It's weird, yeah. I don't know. The Zucker <laughs> Family is one of those series where I really want to like it because I really did like it before. Um, it's certainly, it's not the worst one in the book. I will say that for sure. No, absolutely, yeah. But it, it might be the one I'm most disappointed by on a regular basis. Fair enough. Um, yeah, I have nothing substantial to say other than it, it right. came out and it was fine. Uh, Mama Yu Yu. I really like how they finally brought back Mama just to make her a damsel. Yep. Um, I also I also like how they used Cleave and then RCT. Uh, this shit is fucking over, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. This shit's done in a few weeks, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Green Green Greens. Him using his own play as his ideal hit is hard as fuck. Yes. Um, I am not super high on Green Green Greens. Like, uh, it seems like a lot of people are. They they really seem to like it on the, the okay. TL. Um, I'm not super high on it. I thought it was cool. I think it yeah. maybe just because it's golf. I don't know. I should be. I might just be prejudiced. <laughs> um, golf does suck. It's true. It, yeah, but uh, I also really like the um the art where she misses the shot and it like it's her yeah. fucking like black eyes taking up the whole frame <laughs> was like it was cool. Um, uh, kill blue. It's it, fine. It's fine. I kill blue is one of those ones where I'm like it. It's all right. <laughs> it's been fine in the past. The past chapters are fine. Uh, my note in it was just a thumbs up emoji, so we can move on with that. Yeah, one. yeah, uh, that's a perfect <laughs> summary. I think of kill blue. Is thumbs up. Uh, Shadow eliminators. Uh, yeah. Dude, this shit sucks. <laughs> I don't like it. I think what, you know what it reminds I think me what of. We, what's up? Um, it reminds me a lot of someone who read Shaman King and was like, "Enough time has passed. I can make it again." <laughs> um, and it's not as good. I wouldn't know. I haven't read that. But Shaman I'll King's trust really your, good. I'll um, trust your opinion on it. This feels very similar, but also like not good. Um, I, I have. <laughs> I would much rather read New Age Exorcist than Shadow Eliminators. Further, I'll say that. That's ooh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. fucking brutal. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I do not give a shit about Shadow Illuminators. Yeah, I don't either. I won't lie. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> two on Ice. This manga moves really fast. I think it's ultimately for the best because if we got bogged down in the minutia of figure skating, this would not have made it to Chapter 24. Yeah, the fact that... I'm not going to lie. This is going to sound really like, catty, like bitchy of me, but uh, I'm surprised it's still running. <laughs> not because yeah, it's bad. I, not beca it's I, not bad. I don't think it sucks. I'm speaking no, strictly from the perspective of the content that is being produced. The fact that it's about I... figure skating in a teen boy manga magazine and it's still alive 24 chapters in, I have seen shit that literally, like, uh, what's that fucking Horikoshi assistant one? Uh, Red Hood. That Red was Hood, yeah. literally just like, look at these look at these uh, big old titties and all this shit going on <laughs> and it died before this. Um, I, I think the antagonist is doing a lot of work for it because the antagonist is like cartoonishly evil but like not in a bad way. I think he's, I think it's really funny in a good way. I like the antagonist personally. I think how ins absurdly evil he is is really entertaining. Yeah, well, it's funny because he's really comically evil in a in a series where there's like not yeah. stakes, right? Like it's yeah, it's it's a very funny um, juxtaposition to like the content versus the character. It kind of reminds yes. me of the guy from Akane Banashi, where he's like they treat him like he's Frieza and he's <laughs> yeah. like just a stage performer. <laughs> like it's, yeah, yeah. This this dude just does not like women. At the end of the day. Oh, that explains why it's still running. Because he has a common trend with <laughs> most readers of this. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. All right, oh, what's no, next? No, no. That's it.
Oh, that was it? Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, so there you go. Oh, Chainsaw Man. We should probably do Chainsaw Man. Oh, shit! I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Yeah, because I didn't take notes of it because I just read it right before the episode. Yeah, okay. Uh, it was fine. Yeah, it was okay. Um, <laughs> I, I still don't really understand why War only has one arm, because we know they can regenerate limbs. So... Uh, there's probably some detail I've, I've forgotten. I I have not read Chainsaw Man since it ended. Uh, my only experience with Chainsaw Man again was the anime, so it's been uh, quite some time. Yeah, I, I just I don't. Yeah, I feel like uh, we see them regenerate tons of times, and War just hasn't. Um, I'm sure there's a reason. I just don't remember it at the time. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Or maybe she'll just drink blood and regenerate it and be like, "Oh, neat! I can do that thing." <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, uh, chapter was fine. Yeah, it was. It was good. It was all right. Chapter. It was once again another blink and you miss a chapter. Yeah, I don't even know if like like. I don't even know if that's a product of Chainsaw Man itself or what it is about it, but it really feels like you pop that shit open and it's gone. I mean, they're always like 15 pages, which is a little bit less than a normal. I, I don't it's know. about 75% like, uh, of a normal, but... Kagurabachi, you know, I know it's coded and everything, but I feel like there's so much more to chew on every chapter. Yeah, well, uh, Chainsaw Man is weird in that it feels like it doesn't weave any of it together, right? Like, mm-hmm. you get all the shit to like eat at once and then it's like now we're gonna fight for a while yeah and there's gonna be nothing and then you get the bit like the the reveal where denji's in the thing and they're cutting him up or whatever that was like whoa that was crazy and now we just have to like have the fights for a while you know yeah like whereas with kagurabachi it kind of feels like not to glaze super hard which is what i'm doing but it feels like even when they're fighting like there's there's plot being developed forward between Mm -hmm. like character dynamics are moving even while the plot is moving from the action, where it seems like in Chainsaw Man, more so in part two than in part one, because I feel like in part one it did this. But in part two, it, it really feels like we keep pausing the character mm-hmm. stuff to just get to the, the punches and kicks and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah, so the moral of the story is read Kogarabashi. Yeah, basically. That's the moral <laughs> of the show, read Kogarabashi. Kogarabashi and Shill. We gave, you see, we that's, gave it a, that's the name of the channel in the Discord. Yeah, we gave it a channel in the Discord early because yeah. it's so based. Yeah, because it deserves it. <laughs> we broke the rules for Kagurabachi. I think that's it, though. We don't got anything else, right? Uh, I don't. If you don't, then... Uh... No, I don't think so. Oh, my video came back. Yeah, well, I, I said that earlier. I didn't get that yeah, yeah. before. Right. Uh, the, uh, the episode aired so late that it came out on the day that the video came back. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, if, guys, if you're watching this, we're recording this on March 21st, and if it's not out the, on the weekend, I'm sorry. That's just how it goes sometimes. <laughs> it's just how it be sometimes. I'm not in control of it. So if you're mad, go at Zen in the Discord and say, fuck you, Zen Rado. How dare you? Yeah, I hope they hit you that. with the beam. I hope they hit you with the, the ailment beam even harder. <laughs> the ailment beam. Dude, that shit's like, I'm still struggling a little bit for it, but we're, we'll Man. make it happen. <laughs> I'm sorry, the, the two the two favorite funny shonen men didn't come on time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, it's weird, like, well, because we'll post shit, and then we'll be like, damn, this sucks, but then when we don't, they're like, what the fuck, where's my, where's my shit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, well, we'll, we'll call this yeah. one in the books. Uh, And we'll see you all in the next one.